how can something that's free have this massive impact? I work on something called NEAT, mm -hmm. which is N-E-A-T, or Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. Mm -hmm. NEAT is yeah. what we work on. So we might say two to three times a week to do walking, and mm -hmm. that would be planned exercise for maybe 20 minutes. But gardening, it could be doing yard work. At least the research that I looked at, which was pretty cool, it was saying that on average, somebody who increases that NEAT can burn about 350 calories more per day with some planned exercise and doing small tweaks with your diet doesn't take much to then start to see weight loss. Why is Roy's parking so far? He can just park right there. Sometimes it's okay to be extremely inefficient. And what I mean by that is in your going to the grocery store, just consciously choose to park at the furthest place. If you're in the grocery store, if you wanna save a little bit money and burn a little bit more calories, grab the basket thing. The basket does a few things for me. One, I have to carry it. Yeah. Two, it prevents me from overspending. Car is one thing. It's really easy, but then trying to carry something for 20, 30 minutes can be very exhausting over time, especially if you start to pile things on. Which out of the three, if you can rank them, has been the most impactful for you? I think the most impactful for me has been over the past 15 years, this has been the largest excuse in terms of not getting healthy. While in the past, it angered me, now it breaks my heart because there are a ton of ways to lose weight without the use of money. And I want to have a conversation with my wife and I in this Dietitian and Trainer series about free ways you guys can lose weight. And it's something that we implement with all our clients. It's something that we implement with ourselves. And I feel like it's criminal for not to share it because at the end of the day, you don't need money to lose weight. You just need these three free ways. And if you can implement this now, you're gonna have massive success in your weight loss journey. <laughs> all right, so let's get right into the first way we can actually lose weight. Yes, for free for free. <laughs> Which is the emphasis today. Yeah. So what's the first one? The first one is walk more. Mm -hmm. And this one seems to be really accessible for almost anyone. Mm -hmm. And we have a few different good examples of what this looks like, but it's basically a, a good way to start if someone is intimidated by going into the gym. A lot of the patients that I work with, they say, I need to start moving. Do I need to get a membership to a gym? Mm -hmm. um, what do you hear from people? And I know that you are really good at implementing a walking routine mm -hmm. with your clients. How do you start that conversation, would you say? I think you have to start it out with a question. And the question is like, what's your occupation? And here's what's mm. cool. Over the over the past 15 years, I've been tracking their steps. And here's what's right. crazy. And I don't know if there's a t statistic on it, but the first five years, I've noticed there's somewhere around, they're taking somewhere around 6,000 to 7,000 steps. And we had them use something called a body bug and Fitbit back then. And we were able to kind of see where it was. And that was just their normal average. Mm -hmm. And as the years went by, it got less and less. And then since COVID, I'd, I'd be excited to see someone that had two or 3,000. So over the course of the 15 years, as our technology grew, as the jobs started to change, I've started to notice a lack of walking. Yes. And one of the easiest ways to implement a brand new habit that can have a significant change in their health is just by identifying where that is for them. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that might be watching this, I think it's worth to just ask and track and measure what you're doing on a daily basis. Because if you just change your steps from two to 10, you might not even have to have a conversation with my wife and I. You might not even have to go to the gym to be able to see some of those major weight loss growths initially right right so it's very interesting to me because 
so many of the clients that do come in don't even see that as a massive contributor to their weight gain. Right. Yeah. I've noticed the same thing with my patients over the years, especially like you said, after COVID, Mm -hmm. because so many jobs moved to somebody's house, they're virtual now. So even when I'm seeing patients, I'm virtual, I'm sitting and I sit on a ball. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're also going to talk a little bit about different ways to just move a little bit more incrementally um, outside of walking. But it's so interesting when I first meet with people, I have them track. And most people don't know that their phone can be tracking. If they have used some sort of watch before, they can do that. I actually had a patient last week who didn't want to have her phone on her always. She was tracking steps at work in an office and didn't want to have to physically bring that with her. And so she got a pedometer Mm -hmm. and pedometers are really cheap. I think 10 dollars but you can also um, use your phone that's for you already have that technology it's not a requirement to get a fancy watch or a pedometer it's great to just know where your baseline is and like you said going from you said two to ten but for people who a lot yeah for people who don't know we're talking about thousands so two thousand to Mm -hmm. ten thousand steps and so how do you usually once you know somebody's baseline how many thousands of steps do you kind of shoot for them to do? Yeah, so great question. So I think I think initially going to 10,000 steps is going to be a challenge for most. Mm-hmm. So I asked them, hey, can you walk another 25 to 30 minutes extra throughout yeah. the day? And typically they'll add four or 5,000 to that. Mm-hmm. And from 2,000 to seven to 8,000, can be significant over the course of 30 days. Yeah. So I think the, tr- the, the key is to just how can I add movement to their day without making it with so much friction? 100%. Right? So while there are some athletes that want to go right into that 10K, the, the thing that I always ask myself is, can they do this without me? Mm-hmm. And can they do this 90 days from now? Yeah. And if you can look at your steps in that way and how can I implement it into my life, I think you're going to be a lot more successful. And I, I want to ask, because you implement this for yourself. Mm-hmm. How do you add more steps without adding the 25 minutes extra in your day, especially if you're a stay-at-home mom or you work at from home and you have a kid that you have to watch for? How do you implement to get additional steps without like, okay, I'm going to block out 25 minutes to walk. What are you doing? Yeah. So I actually, for myself, I do this, but also for my patients, I work on something called NEAT, Mm -hmm. which is N-E-A-T or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Mm -hmm fancy acronym. You don't need to know what it stands for, but NEAT is what we work on. So we might say two to three times a week to do walking, and Mm -hmm. that would be planned exercise for maybe 20 minutes. But what you asked is kind of how do we get in a little bit more movement without that planned? And that is anything that falls under the NEAT category, which could be gardening. It could be doing yard work. Mm -hmm. It's actually considered just standing versus sitting. So a lot of people have transitioned to standing desks that can convert that go up and down. Mm -hmm. Mine would be sitting on a ball. So Mm -hmm. if you've never tried sitting on a a ball before, it's pretty amazing. It's really good for your lower back. So Mm -hmm. if you are someone who's working at home, a way that you can burn some additional calories is actually by sitting on an exercise ball. It takes some more core work and strength to be able to do so. And I'm now moving a little bit more than usual. Mm -hmm. Um, Some other things that I like to do as well would be um, walking up and down stairs more frequently. I don't mind that we have a two-story house because walking up and down stairs for me feels really good Mm -hmm. and is really good for my legs. But a thing that I like to do is include Lucas. So for moms out there, 
it is difficult to think I have to have a full hour away from my child to do something at the gym. And instead, I like to talk with the moms that I work with about how can we play a little bit more with our kids. So this weekend, Lucas and I, Lucas had an inflatable ball Mm -hmm. that he's been obsessed with. And so I just, for I think it was 30 to 45 minutes, we were just hitting that around. And I know that people don't think that that seems like a big deal, but imagine if every day you're just playing a little bit more Mm -hmm. with your kids. And something that we did yesterday that was actually really fun, we went to the park and we were playing ping pong. Um, So these little things where you are moving slightly more can really start to add up. So research actually has shown, um, or at least the research that I looked at, which was pretty cool, it was saying that on average, somebody who increases that NEAT can burn about 350 calories more per day. Mm -hmm. And so imagine that with some planned exercise and doing small tweaks with Mm -hmm. your diet, doesn't take much to then start to see weight loss happen. Which is huge. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you 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 kind of shared that because blending family time and exercise is not just beneficial just for the weight loss. Yeah. What happens with Lucas on the rest of the day is much better outcome. I feel like he's not as crabby. You know, yeah. he's tired, he's excited. So you're you're getting you're doing a lot of things at once. You're mm-hmm. losing weight in the process. You're connecting with your kiddo. Yeah. Your kiddo is not having temper tantrums. In fact, I think when we go outside and play, we just tend to have a better day as parents because he's just more chill. Yeah, it helps with my mental health to yeah. be moving. And so I recognize that when we go to a park like mm-hmm. last week, instead of Lucas was at a splash pad and yeah. instead of me sitting on a really hard park bench mm-hmm. for an hour now Lucas was playing and he was getting wet so I didn't want to necessarily be in the splash pad with him but what I did is I found a little curb that yeah. was in the shade because it was 90 degrees and I had headphones in I was listening to a podcast which is a cup filler for me mm-hmm. and what I was doing is just stepping up and down really slowly and I was at the park. So, you know, I'm outside, which is naturally a cup filler for me as well. And I'm Mm -hmm. moving versus sitting down. And I did that for about 45 minutes Yeah. and Lucas would come over to me or I would, you know, be interrupted. It's not like I had my head down and I was, you know, it was still fun. Like I'm watching him and waving to him. He's spraying me with water every now Mm -hmm. and again, but I'm just moving up and down. Mm -hmm. It felt so good in my legs to just be doing that. And then when I was done, we actually ended up being able to stay longer because then when I sat down, I felt like, oh, okay, I can stretch a little bit now. And I was able to stay longer at the splash pad where if I just go and sit down, I'm it's pretty short. It's maybe 45 minutes and I'm like, okay, we need to get out of here. So Lucas got to have a better day because I was moving. And I think that's the thing to remember for moms is it doesn't mean that you're taking away. It actually means that you're adding. Yeah. Yeah. There's days where you tell me I have to take Lucas and then I have to do Murph. There was that Murph stage. Mm -hmm. And what I did instead of just like, let's go to the park because I have to inspire him to do it. And I still got to get my Murph in. Yeah. And I would be doing Murph on some of the the bars or maybe part of the slide. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool is he'll start to do some of that. Yeah. You know, and then the other side to me, what breaks my heart a lot is I just see the parents texting or they're looking at reels. And there's sometimes where the parent actually starts to move more because I'm just there. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, it's very cool to see that – it gives someone just a different idea of of baby what babysitting can look like. Babysitting can be baby active mm-hmm. exercise, right? And I think it's important to to one show that you can do that. Yeah. 
I, I like I'm the only one person. You're the only one mom that's there that's actually moving and watching your son or your your kid. And I think it's very empowering to actually see that. And uh, it's just low hanging fruit that people people just don't see just move and it doesn't have you don't have to do murph yeah or you don't there. have to be like doing burpees yeah yeah and yeah. like doing something really is sometimes if i don't have something to step up on i'm just walking the perimeter exactly. of the playground and i'm just usually listening to something because i understand that as moms sometimes we just do need to like sit and take a break mm -hmm. and usually that's because we're physically um, not exhausted, but it's mental exhaustion. And so we mm -hmm. think that by sitting at the playground and being on our phone, that's going to recharge us. When in mm -hmm. fact, the thing that I know that's going to recharge me is just doing those slow walks around and listening to something that inspires me. And so usually that's a podcast or some sort of learning. And so by the end of our time at the playground, I actually have more energy versus if I don't do those things, I'm very low in terms of energy after that. So right. it's just giving ourselves permission to make it look different than maybe what we see other parents doing. And I like that mm -hmm. you said it sometimes inspires other parents to like, move what are you doing? a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. And then they, I think sometimes it's just, oh, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't mm -hmm. know that I could be moving and still be a good mom or dad at the same time. Right. And Something that we actually do every winter is that we play Pokemon Go together as a yeah. family. And so that's also something that's fun. Yeah. that's fun to do. So another example of how we can do some more movement, but together as a family. And why I like to do that in the winter is because usually at 4.30 at night, 5.30, it's yeah. already dark. And so we really do need to be inspired a little bit more. And we, mm -hmm. we like games. So... If Lucas is coming to me and he's like, hey, mom, let's go catch Pokemon, then yeah. I'm much more likely he's asking to go walk because we can find better Pokemon if we're active. Mm -hmm. And that'll keep us at the park, even if it's dark and we find yeah. a nice park that has good lighting, we'll stay there and be much more engaged and active than we would, even though my body is saying you just need to go home and go to bed. It's yeah. only 5.30 though. So in the summer, this is easier for me now to be active at night, but mm -hmm. in the winter, you might need to change things up and think about yeah. that. Yeah, it's really interesting because we'll have conversations in the middle of the night. It's like, hey, you want to go to the park with me, catch Pokemon? Yeah. You know, well, <laughs> where it should just be watching something on Netflix or Instagram, but instead I'm like, uh, I got to, I got to get my steps in to hatch this egg. So yeah. it's really, <laughs> it's very motivating when yeah. you kind of, you know, do some sort of game. Mm -hmm. And I also like that you mentioned Netflix because on the weekends or at night, that is a very typical thing that yeah. we're doing more of. Mm -hmm. If you look back on the last 10 years, TV looked a lot different. So now right. we're binging shows. So I knew, for instance, last week I was going to watch four hours of Bridgerton. Mm -hmm. Like it came out. I've been waiting for it. I knew I was going to watch it. And so what I did was I watched it while I was walking. Oh, cool. So yeah. not all four of those hours was I active, but I think it's really interesting if you know, hey, I'm about to go into some sort of marathon with this. Could I move for 20 yeah. minutes? Could I move for 30 minutes? And then maybe you'll end up doing more. I always feel better after doing that. I don't know if anyone's... Right. After That's you've binged, hack. you kind of like come out and you're like, yeah. oh gosh, like you feel guilty. You do like yeah. you haven't done anything. And instead I walked uh, up and down our stairs actually on one of the times mm -hmm. when I was walking and another time I walked outside. I can, you can stream now outside. And so I was just walking around the neighborhood, watching my Bridgerton mm -hmm. and totally happy about it. And so kind of pairing those things together, the things that you enjoy with the medicine yeah. that you know you need, which is the exercise walking, and yeah. activity. It's having a marathon inside a marathon. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a really great way to do it. So I like technology, one, because of that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I also dislike technology because it makes us so efficient that we don't have to leave our house. Yeah. Right. So sometimes it's okay to be extremely inefficient. And what I mean by that is when you're growing, going to the grocery store 
just consciously choose to park at the furthest place. Yeah. There was that, that was one thing that I did. And I told my clients that I was going to do that with them. Mm-hmm. Right. And they, they're now more inspired to be like, why is Royce parking so far? He could just park right there. Right. It's like, no, I'm, I want to do it because I want to teach you that, that it's okay to be inefficient at times. Yeah. Right. To take the longer route. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's not using a power tool today. It's using hand tools. Right. You know, and it's a, it's just those little inefficiency habits can stack over time Mm -hmm. and it can really start to impact your health in, in a huge way. Yeah. And those were more examples of neat type activities. Mm -hmm. Cleaning would be another one. Yeah, And I feel like that's really positive. Like no one's going to get mad in our house if I'm cleaning more. Right. Like you're going to be so excited. So if I, and again, I usually don't like to clean unless I'm listening to something. So Mm -hmm. I will throw on a show, throw on a podcast and yeah, I'll go to town on some cleaning. And for anyone who's ever cleaned before, you work up a sweat. I mean, yeah, it's a great activity, but it's again considered one of those neat activities where it's not necessarily planned and the grocery store is another great one. I actually heard from one of my patients this week something that I thought was pretty brilliant. So she does park farther away. Mm-hmm. Now, when she loads up her cart at Costco, she always is getting at Costco too, like the really heavy bags of dog food. So her yeah. cart ends up being about 50 pounds by the end of when she's stocked it full of everything. She will take an additional two laps around the outside of Costco wow. because she knows that not only is she getting more steps, but she's now pushing around 50 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't take that long for her to do, but that's again being inefficient. Mm -hmm. where we would think that you shouldn't be, you know, necessarily doing that. But I think that's great. Take a little bit more time if you can. Hey guys, we are finally accepting students in our weight loss academy. In this program, we are teaching you the skill set, the mindset, the tool sets to be able to not only lose weight over the next 12 weeks, but keep it off for a lifetime. If you find yourself struggling to shed pounds or you're regaining the weight after dieting, this academy is designed for you. Now click on the show notes below so you can join our wait list and you will be the first to know when our curriculum begins. Now back to the show. Peace. There's some things in life being inefficient can have a be- like a massive impact. 100%. Another one, at least I, I just do it. I don't like to push carts. Mm-hmm. I like to have the hand thing, right? So like I have to carry everything. So oh, the basket. Yeah, the basket. I forgot <laughs> what it was called. The hand thing. Yeah, but the basket <laughs> does a few things for me. One, I have to carry it. Yeah. Two, it prevents me from overspending. Like I could only put so much in there. Yeah. Right? And uh, I think that's like a major thing that I, that I didn't realize possibly is causing me to burn a little bit more calories because the car is one thing. It's really easy, but then trying to carry something yeah. for 20, 30 minutes can be very exhausting over time, especially if you start to pile things on. So if you're in the grocery store, if you want to save a little bit money and burn a little bit more calories, grab the basket thing, put as many things as you can in there, you're going to save money, right? I think it's going to be a huge thing especially in terms of weight loss, right? So we we shared a bunch in there. Let's go into the second one before, <laughs> okay. <laughs> before we run out of time, right? So okay. what is the second one? What's the second thing? So we just had walk more. Yep, walk more mm-hmm. slash move more, I guess, because we yeah. included some other activities. And then the second one is breathe more. Mm. Yeah. This is a huge one for me. Mm-hmm. Because I thought breathe more meant exercise harder. Right, like breathe faster. Like breathe faster, (laughs) take in more oxygen. And while that is extremely effective for weight loss, what we're talking about breathe more is meditation. Yes. And this probably, this particular habit probably is responsible for all of the crazy workouts that I have a tendency to do. Mm -hmm. And personally me meditating more and me breathing more has like quadrupled my recovery rate 
Mm -hmm. The moment I started to meditate, I started to notice my recovery go through the roof, meaning like I'm not feeling sore the next day. Yeah. In fact, sometimes I'm not feeling sore at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to do two or three or four workouts because of this single habit. Now, while it's not going to possibly do that for you, it's done that because I'm just less stressful throughout the day. Mm hmm and there's a ton of studies where if you're breathing and you're conscious, how that significantly reduces your cortisol is, is the name of the game. Yeah. And something that I often do when I first meet with someone is get an idea of their stress. Mm -hmm. And for the mamas that I'm working with, they're like an eight out of 10 on the stress level every day. Mm -hmm. And when they can identify that stress increased in their life is usually when the weight started to creep on as well. Mm -hmm. And so it could have been five years ago in the, during the pandemic or when they had kids and then they can see that their stress level has been so high and they haven't been able to bring it back down. Mm -hmm. So something that I'll often give to people is the resource of insight timer, which I use mm -hmm. and you use, we use as a family sometimes yeah. daily. Yeah. Which is a free app that has a lot of guided meditations because Thousands. yeah, I mean, Thousands. you're never going to get bored if you want to listen to a different one every day. I've mm -hmm. actually found my favorite teachers because I love their voice and I like the timing. And sometimes I like the predictability of knowing what will happen in mm -hmm. that, you know, six to 10 minute meditation. And so I have my favorite saved so I can go back to those. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people are intimidated by meditation because they think it's just sitting. They think sitting. it's like sitting, chanting, mm -hmm. right? Like throwing on the incense. <laughs> right. You got to totally Zen out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the case. So, so you like to listen to like very particular teachers. Yes. they typically have an awesome accent. They right? always have accents. Yeah, yours is always like some <laughs> Irish girl or some Irish dude or some She's British Scottish. person yes. or Scottish. <laughs> and then so while that like, right, like I, I think it's worth to explore what you gravitate to because I mm -hmm. gravitate to breath, breath work. Yes. And there's thousands of different types of meditation I didn't even know. And I'm still kind of learning them, mm -hmm. right? So breath work is like counting your inhales and counting your exhales and holding yes. it in and fast breathing mm -hmm. and then relaxive breathing and like body awareness. Like those are going to be some, those are my the ones that I save. Yes. Because I'm so That's body aware and it's just like, oh, okay, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. And over, as I started to implement this, this journey of meditation and breathing, I started to also recognize that when I eat crappy foods, Mm -hmm. or drink alcohol that I was performing the same breath pattern. Mm. And let me explain. Like when I, when I was eating like my, my Kit Kat bar, I would just eat it and I'd be like, <sighs> you know, just, just that simple, that, that me noticing that, I started to notice that my clients kind of did the same thing. That mm -hmm. was their only version of coping. Right. While it seemed like it was the cookie that was doing it, it was their breath pattern after it. And this wasn't just the cookie. This mm -hmm. was also the cigarettes, right? So it's like in them inhaling, mm -hmm. holding them, and then exhaling also with, with weed and vaping, like whatever you want to do. I started to notice that their coping mechanism, they thought it was external, but really it was the breath pattern that was, was, was associated with it. Yeah. And when I started to just ask them, what were you, what are you doing when you're eating that cookie? Like, what's your breath like? Let's just list that all out. Well, it kind of just slows down. It's like, I think it's worth exploring other ways to do that without the actual food. Would you be interested in practicing this breath work for the next 30 days? Mm -hmm. And what is really cool is one, they stop eating the food, right? Right. And two, now they're going through their day feeling energized and they're not stressed. And then now they also have even more energy to exercise. Mm -hmm. And they're not taking in these harmful substances or 
extra caloric beverages yep. and just food to be able to cope. Now, while you can still have some of that, they're just not doing it as much. They're like, Royce, I'm not smoking anymore. Royce, I'm not right. eating ice cream at the end of the night. Like, it's very interesting. I just started to notice that. And it was just because I, I implemented six breaths every single morning or mm-hmm. 10 minutes of a meditation every single morning. Yeah. Which is which is just cool to see. And and uh, if you are not implementing this one particular, I think it's worth exploring because you might see some significant changes in your weight and your mind. It's unbelievable. I would say me practicing breath work was one of the most beneficial things I've ever done as a mom. Mm-hmm. So for any other moms out there who have kids who don't like to be in the car, Lucas, I mean, now he's sick, so this is not happening as frequently, but Mm -hmm. he's never liked being in the car since he was a baby. So for me, my anxiety was so high because for me to hear him screaming when I can't comfort him, we're in the car, so there's not much that I can do. And so one of the things that I started to implement while I was driving was breathing. Mm -hmm. And I used to do, so my favorite breathing patterns are either box breathing, which would be inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four. Um, Another one that I like to do that this one is more common for me to do in the car is a five, five, seven. So an in for five, hold for five and out for seven. Mm -hmm. And what's so fascinating is when Lucas was a toddler and he would be having a tantrum in the back because he's mad that we're driving somewhere, I would start to do that breath pattern just Mm -hmm. out loud because I'm just trying to hold it together. Mm -hmm. So I'm just very loudly. After about a minute of me doing that, I hear Lucas doing that. So there's been a few times where he just picks up on my breath pattern and he picks up that I am now in a more relaxed state. Mm -hmm. And man, did that change like everything for me. I still do this, even though it doesn't happen as frequently, but sometimes when we're in the car, maybe I'm having Mm -hmm. a hard time with pickup or drop off from school, which is stressful for me. I just start breathing in the car in that same pattern. And if I really need a little bit additional help, what I used to do at the end of my work day is on YouTube, I would search car meditation. Mm -hmm. And so for anybody who wants to go from your work day where you are stressed and you're thinking about all the work things and you want to come into parenthood, right, Mm -hmm. at night, totally refreshed instead of bringing that work day with you look up because i'm going right from work to pick up lucas there's no in between right i've got 15 minutes to get it together so that Mm -hmm. i'm not snappy to him and so i do a car meditation that it's specific for driving so i'm not closing my eyes but it actually allowed me space to Mm -hmm. get rid of that work day thought and stress pattern Mm -hmm. And now I'm showing up really excited to see Lucas. So that was also a really big game changer for me. And I started to notice just overall my stress starting to go down when I realized I can do this any time of day. Like Mm -hmm. you can always breathe a little bit more. And if you're able to do that, you are going to be in a better headspace to make better choices, to move more, to eat better, to prep foods that you know you should be. So that stress component is huge. Really quick, comment below, when Tara was breathing, did you breathe the same way? Because I did, Mm -hmm. right? It's really important to see some of these little nuances because when you relax, for some magical reason, everything around you have a tendency to relax as well. Yeah. And it goes to just show you that if you start to take care of yourself, Mm -hmm. everything else starts to kind of fall in place. And I'm telling you this, I've been practicing this with Lucas too. It's like, it's huge because you don't don't know what toddler you're going to get after school. (laughs) It could be the toddler that's like, hey, dad, I love you. Or he could be like, dad, I want to go home. Give me some treats. Let's go. 
mm-hmm. like, and he's freaking out. He doesn't want to hear hear you talk. He doesn't want to hear any of your music or your podcasts. <laughs> like, it's just. But when you start to relax, and then you have a kid that has a tantrum, mm-hmm. it's very cool how it starts to dissolve it because because they're going into a space where like, why is why are they so relaxed? Yeah, and when... I, it's huge. Yeah. Oh, so, there's, there's Lucas now. Yeah. So one last cool patient story, and then we can get to the third one. Mm-hmm. But I actually had a patient of mine who started to implement this breath work, and she realized that it was most beneficial to her before the start of her work day. And she's a manager. Mm-hmm. And so at the place that she works, she started to do a five-minute huddle with her team, and they all do breath work together. Wow. And so – they all start their day off much more calm. And that was the coolest thing to hear is when I hear somebody teaching those around them, those Mm -hmm. behaviors. And that means the whole rest of her workday, she knows that her employees are a little bit less stressed. Mm -hmm. And so again, like it's so powerful and it should be something that we teach kids in school, really how to do breath work and how to even do yoga and, Uh, different Mm -hmm. coping skills but since we don't we're I feel like all of us as adults are kind of piecing these things together what is working for us but I think we gave some pretty good examples of ways to be breathing more it's so good yeah so really quick I just want to touch up on this because cortisol does play a huge role in Mm -hmm. weight loss and if you have an elevated amount of it it can be very destructive doesn't even matter what you eat like once, if you're in a stress mode and you're eating everything good, your body's just going to store it as, as fat for the most part. And, and when, when we start to implement breath work, there's this level of consciousness that starts to happen when people start to eat. And I'll have clients that I explain to them, I was like, there's, there's four different types of eating. One, there's fog eating where you just are eating mm-hmm. unconsciously. Right, I'm guilty of it. I think everyone has these four levels. The other one is emotional eating, mm-hmm. right? Like those are the two really, really tough ones that I think that create high level cortisol type of uh, nutrition habits. Emotional eating is when like you're frustrated or you're sad or you're angry and you just start, or you're anxious and you just start to eat the pantry, right? right? And that's like it's worth to know. Like once you're aware that you're doing those two you're 90% there. You're going to mm-hmm. make some really good choices. And then the other two, I think is going to be the most powerful when you start to merge onto this is when the cortisol starts to drop. And the, the two is one is called joy eating, mm-hmm. right? And then the other one is called fuel eating, which is one of the higher, highest levels is few is eating to fuel for a particular event or workout. It's just being conscious of, of what you're putting in. Mm-hmm. Now, when, when someone asks me, hey, Royce, can I have a meal for my birthday? And I want this cookie. I want this ice cream. I want this pasta. I want this this pizza. I was like, and I tell them, I'm like, yes, you can. But in order to do that, you got to ask these, you got to make sure you answer these five questions. And then you're going to text it to me. And the five questions, like, what did it taste like? Like, what did it feel like? What did you hear? What did it look like? It's the five senses, right? Mm-hmm. So when you ask the five senses and you write it down, you become present yeah. in the moment. And that food that you're actually consuming now is beneficial to the body instead of this like high level stress component where you just feel guilty or you're coping in a particular way. So just this particular habit, this joy eating protocol that I have mm-hmm. has massively like impacted the relationship with food, yeah. which is very cool. I think, I think, and then the, the breath changes. When you're asking those five questions and you're truly present, when you're having that reward meal, right? You have to earn it first with my clients. It changes, it changes their breath pattern. It yeah. just, it's just worth to, it's just like, if comment below, if you do try this, and you're and you're writing those things down, especially if you worked out really, really hard. It's your birthday. You want to celebrate a little bit. Write that down, and and then write down. Did I change my breath pattern? 
And oftentimes, like when you ask these questions and you're consuming this type of meal, Mm -hmm. your breath pattern starts to slow down, which is very cool, like nugget that I wish I would have known 15 years ago. Now you're getting it now because it's completely changed hundreds, maybe even thousands of my athletes, especially with the relationship with food. Yeah. And that's part of a mindful eating practice that I like to teach as well is breathing in between bites Mm -hmm. and slowing down because when you typically are doing that fog eating or that emotional eating, the pace is very fast Yeah, and to the point where you're not actually tasting what Mm -hmm. you're eating and it's more so um, kind of that like very fast paced and getting it in and then afterwards you're like like, what did i just do yes um Mm -hmm. versus a mindful meal where you have slowed down you're breathing in between bites Mm -hmm. you're hopefully if you can be doing it with other people so that you can also be connecting connecting and talking and having that lower level stress during a meal Mm -hmm. time it's so good Yeah, when people are emotionally eating and fog eating, they're thinking about something completely different, not the food. And then the other two is you're thinking about the food Mm -hmm. and what it's going to do for you, right? And it's it's very powerful. I think it's worth, again, to try that free way to lose weight. Yes. All right, let's go to the third one. This is by far probably, I mean, they're all really massively impactful, but this was the one that, I refused to do for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And you were always like, you need to do this more. And I was like, I do drink enough water. And you're like, no, you're drinking black water. (laughs) Right. That's coffee. Coffee. (laughs) So let's talk about drinking water as one of the final ways to really create this massive weight loss transformation. Why is drinking water so pivotal when, when it comes to weight loss? Yeah. So great question. Drinking water, which is so interesting because when I first meet with people and we're doing a one-on-one session, I'm doing an evaluation and we get to the part where I ask how much water are you drinking daily? Mm -hmm. I would say 99% of people say, oh, like I'm not drinking enough. And they're most likely not tracking it. Maybe they have a water bottle. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're getting in about 30 ounces. And so that always ends up being one of our first goals. So like we've talked about in previous episodes, tracking can be really important for food. So outside of tracking, because I usually see people weekly. So I'll say before I see you next week, I want you to track your food. And we set a specific water goal. Mm -hmm. And because that is so huge to get people to just number one, be conscious of where your starting point is like for you when you were (laughs) for years when I was trying to get and this was a while ago so Mm -hmm. this was maybe eight years ago that you were not drinking enough water so it's not recent now Mm -hmm. you're really good about it but I would find you halfway through the day and you're laying down because you have a headache yeah and I ask you well how much water did you drink and you're like none Mm -hmm. all I had was coffee and like a bang drink yeah so Um, what starts to happen when people are actually hydrating. So it might take us a few weeks to get up to that point, but what they start to see is number one, a decrease in headaches, Mm -hmm. which it's amazing how people function with headaches Mm -hmm. and they just have like a low level headache all the time. And then once they're actually hydrated, they're like, This is what it's supposed to feel like. Mm -hmm. So that's a number one. Number two would be more energy, which Mm -hmm. doesn't seem like that would be coming from water. But once you are hydrated, you typically have more water, which can help you in many ways. But most of the time for people that I'm working with, they finally want to go walk Yeah. because now they don't have a headache. They don't need to go lay down Mm -hmm. and they have some extra energy. Great. You can increase your NEAT and walking. Mm -hmm. And another thing that it really helps with is for people trying to learn their hunger and fullness cues, which is what I am working with people on for a while, trying to distinguish the difference between when they're thirsty, when they're hungry. And it's really hard to know if you are dehydrated, Mm -hmm. if you are feeling actual hunger, or if you are thirsty. And so once somebody 
gets to that point where they are finally hydrated, they're actually feeling their true hunger um, and even their fullness cues as well. So it can be that first step to them being able to hit like an 80% full versus being way too full um, mm-hmm. and then recognizing, oh, I'm thirsty right now. I'm not actually hungry. So it can sometimes just by hydrating, cut back on some of those calories, not intentionally, but it's an easy way to make sure that we're just getting the calories that we need. This is so good. I'm glad you shared that. I want to attack this three different angles. Okay. Because there's <laughs> there's a lot with this and what I've learned over the past 15 years. Mm-hmm. There's a wealth benefit to this. Mm-hmm. There's a health benefit to this, obviously. And there's also a relationship benefit to this. I want to start out with the financial because there's, because this is the whole concept of like, I don't have enough money to invest in myself. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest things that I ask my clients is how many how many drinks do you have? Whether whether it's alcoholic beverages or sodas, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh yeah, uh, two or three times, and I want a day, a day, yeah, right. And if you just did that on a monetary perspective, mm-hmm. right, a soda is now like we're talking, it's two, three dollars, or energy drinks are two to three dollars. Alcohol, I don't know. If you're going to the bar, it's going to be fifteen to twenty. Right. But over the course of a week, if you're drinking that much, that easily adds up to fifty to a hundred dollars per week, Easy. which is an awesome membership to a gym. It could even be a few sessions from a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. So right away, if you replace this habit, you will have enough money to train. You will have enough, at least for a gym membership. Yeah. Right. If you want to go upgrade and you're like, I, I want, I'd love to have a trainer there. Boom. There's your money. Mm-hmm. Right. There's your investment. You're welcome. Right. So there's that financial benefit to it. Yeah. The next benefit to it is the, obviously the health benefit. Mm-hmm. Each one of those drinks are 100, 200. Some of them are 300 or 500 calories. Yeah. Which is massive. I've had people actually, we've looked at Starbucks and we've done <laughs> their crazy, exact yeah. order together on their website where you it shows you and you add in all the little extras right Mm -hmm. because if you just yeah you add in the um the whip you add in this you add in the size you add in the extra shots and everything and i've had people realize that they're getting a thousand calories per day in starbucks because it's not just one it's sometimes two maybe you go back for the afternoon one so and they're wondering why can't I lose weight? Well, you have a thousand mm-hmm. calories worth of Starbucks that you're drinking every day, mm-hmm. and it's a fifteen dollar bill. Uh, exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so yeah. So there's huge. So just replacing that now, all of a sudden, you're not taking in a thousand extra calories or five hundred extra mm-hmm. calories because if you just are not eating five hundred calories extra throughout the week for seven days, you're going to lose a pound. That's 3,500 calories. Now, if you're doing, if you completely replace that, you're doing on average a thousand. This is where my clients are like, Royce, oh my gosh, I lost 10 pounds because they were significantly overdoing it on the beverage side. And they're thinking it's my fitness and Mm -hmm. it's not. It's like, dude, I've been modifying your movements so much because you're unable to do it. And they think it's the fitness. I was like, no, 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 no. That's part of it. Mm-hmm. A majority of your weight loss was this habit. Yeah. Was you replacing this need to get this beverage and now you're replacing it with water. So there's this massive health benefit to it. Mm-hmm. Like I always tell them, I was like, a majority of your first 30 to 40, 50 pounds is not going to be the gym. Right. It's going to be your walking and it's going to be your water. And then you're always just shocked about it. But I tell them straight up, and then they implement it. And then because of that, over the course of a week, two weeks, three weeks, they start to build that momentum, which is huge, yeah. right? So there's there's the caloric side of it. Now you're replacing that. And also the other, the satiety side of it. A lot of times we think we're, we're hungry, but really we're just, we're just thirsty. Mm-hmm. And prior to me drinking a lot of water, I would just have really elevated carb type of meals where right. I would just eat everything, mm-hmm. right? And really, I was just, if I if I just took the time to just drink a little bit more water, I would have never really overate as much as I, I did. Yeah. 
right? So that's that was one of the big things that I've learned about myself. The last one is the relationship side. Like, why is there a relationship benefit to this? Because one, you, instead of coping with food or alcohol, you now you really get to connect to what's really wrong. Now you have a conversation with someone, be like, "Why mm-hmm. am I drinking alcohol every single night?" Right. And now you change the. It might not be the relationship with your spouse. It might be a relationship with yourself. And you start to recognize, like, "Oh my gosh, I'm just numbing myself." I have, and then you start to use one of the most powerful tools that you have, which is your brain, mm-hmm. and you start to solve problems. And you're like, "Wait, maybe I should." do this thing for myself. I should join a gym. Yeah. Maybe I should have a conversation with my wife about finances mm-hmm. or about her health or whatever, or our health together or our kids, Yeah, right? And it really starts to sh- like shape the relationship just in general. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you this from experience because I used to drink three, four, five, six IPAs, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, playing video games. Mm -hmm. instead of connecting with my wife, instead of connecting with my kids. And while I worked out a lot. Kid. Yeah, or kid, (laughs) right? While I worked out a lot and I was able to be healthy, the relationship side wasn't. Yeah. And and you can probably speak about that, that I was just numbing myself. That's all I did was drink alcohol and then play video games Mm -hmm. for hours. Oh, yeah. You were locked into those video yeah. games. And that was... Listen, if you're trying to lose weight, but you're just frustrated because you just can't seem to see any results, we would love to help you out. Now, we've been helping thousands of our athletes over the course of a decade by crafting personalized programs that are not only sustainable, but also effective. Now, if you're ready to transform your health, click on the show notes below, book a call with one of our coaches, We'd love to help you out. Now back to the show. Peace. Before we had Lucas as well. So Mm -hmm. it was just the two of us, which seems like there would have been ample time for us to be doing things together. But Mm -hmm. you would get to the point where you were so exhausted mentally and you thought that that was going to recharge you was playing video games and drinking. And it didn't. It didn't, Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's it's it, it's that's how scary some of these simple habits are. Mm-hmm. How can something that's free have this massive impact? And it can. And what breaks my heart is people think that you need money to be able to lose weight, right. but that's not necessarily the case. And if you just if you just drink more water, if you just walk more, if you just breathe more, you're gonna probably one, start to lose weight, and then two, start to be like, oh my gosh, I have all this money to be able to actually go to a gym. Yeah. What I Here's the most part. If you got this far, I'm telling you, you're using money as a crutch to not take care of yourself because I used to be that, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I don't have money. I'm not going to go take. Now it might not be health for me. You know what? I'm not going to take a course. Right. You know, I'm not going to buy that certification. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to point that money is to blame, but when you really understand this concept and you're now aware that a majority of the first weight loss is going to be these three free things, what you start to address is now yourself. Yeah. And that's like the main thing I wanted to grasp out of this is once you understand, now you just have to battle yourself. Why am I not doing it? And if you have money and you've been throwing it towards supplements, <laughs> that these are the foundations. Mm-hmm. You need to move more, you need to drink more, and you need to breathe more. Yes. And if you can do those foundational things, then great, money can be helpful. But mm-hmm. if you are throwing money in the wrong direction as well, just hoping that a supplement will help, but you don't want to address any of the things that we talked about today, it's not going to get mm-hmm. you far. It's going to actually most likely end up to some sort of yo-yo that maybe works initially, and then you're going to be worse off than where you started. I love it. So we'll tackle that mindset stuff (laughs) on an entirely different episode. (laughs) But let's end with this final question. Which, Which out of the three, if you can rank them, has been the most impactful for you? 
and maybe it'll give the audience maybe something that they can tackle first. I think the most impactful for me has been the breathe more. So mm-hmm. it's rank that number one, then second move more, then third is drink more. Mm, that's so good. What's yours? So mine is definitely breathe more. Yeah. The second is drink more water. Yeah. <laughs> and then the third one is move more. So it's just, it's very interesting. Like you might have one of these habits right now. Mm-hmm. You're just missing one more. Yeah. And if you just implemented this one more, it could be your next unlock. Because I thought it was just move more. If I move more, I'll just, everything will be better. But but sometimes it's not. Mm-hmm. You'll only, you'll hit a cap. Yeah. And then I started to do the other things. Mm-hmm. So my recommendation is to just add one more element to your game. And it might be your next unlock for you to lose the weight you're looking for and beyond that. So if you guys like this episode, make sure to share, make sure to subscribe, comment below if you're already doing this. And if you're not, do it and then tell somebody else to do it because that's what we're trying to do. I'll see you guys later. Peace.